Coach, how are you today? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing well. I know you addressed this earlier with the media, but for our listeners, I I'm going to ask you again. Uh, your running back, Le'Veon Bell, was scratched from the game on Sunday because of the, the flu, and then he's at a bowling alley on Saturday night. What are your thoughts on this, and have you spoken to him about it? Yeah, I, I mean, it is what it is. I'd rather him not do that. I mean, obviously, it's it's it looks bad on him. You know, I mean, it's just something that I wish he didn't do, but it happened. You know, we got to worry about the Ravens right now. So is there that line of, well, he didn't really violate any rules, but it's something that bothers you. So would you deal with that differently than you would if a rule was broken? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, it's it's. I look at it. I'm looking at it from his perspective of it's probably not the best look for him. Right, right. You know, I mean, I just rather him be at home getting better, coming off the flu. Will he be disciplined, or is this something that doesn't warrant discipline? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how I discipline somebody that we weren't allowed to, you know, bring to the hotel or the game because he was contagious. So. I mean, we're, we told him to stay home. So the bottom line is he, he was basically on the mend, but at that point officially contagious and not playing. So he, he, you didn't necessarily think by going out he was risking getting more sick. It was more just a bad optic. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't. I, I don't think I can do anything about somebody what to do outside. Right. I mean, he didn't break any laws or anything. All right, a final one on this, Coach, because I know you don't want to deal with this the whole interview, but did you talk to him? I mean, did you sit him down and go, this is a bad look, Lev? Yeah, I told him. And how we, did he we, react? We talked. Uh, he was like, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so now you prepare for the Baltimore Ravens. Short week and Lamar Jackson up in the air. Are RG3 and Lamar Jackson similar enough that the game plan's not going to change that much defensively? Yeah, I think, I mean, different but same, maybe. Mm -hmm. Kind of one of those deals where, obviously, RG3's got experience. You know, he, he's he's been around for a minute. So, you know, you're looking at a, a guy that's not, you know, Lamar's so young. I mean, he is, you can tell, I mean, he's, he's what, 23 years old. I mean, he's got a good spring in his step right now. RG, RG3's been... You know, he's, he's been around a little bit, and, you know, he'll probably be a little he'd be a little less likely to just, you know, take off running a little bit. He'll probably t stay in the pocket just a little bit more. What kind of challenges does a Thursday night game pose for you, Coach? I mean, what do you have to eliminate in your preparation that, you know, you would do for Sunday, but you just can't? You don't have the time to put it in for a Thursday. Yeah, everything just moves really fast. Like, we're, we're on Tuesday, and it's really a Friday for us. So it, it transitioned basically yesterday. You treat almost like part of a Wednesday, and then today's like part of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And tomorrow's a Friday, Saturday. So, I mean, you're cramming a ton of stuff mm -hmm. in, at least watching film, and then you just try to narrow everything down. You try to carry things over that you didn't run from the last game or the last couple of games. You just try to really pair it up to where your guys aren't thinking too much and trying to, you know, allow them to go out and play fast. The hardest thing to do is when you play a team like Baltimore, they're going to do a lot of stuff because they just have a lot of stuff in their playbook. Defensively, offensively, they have a lot of unique things that our defense has to prepare for, which makes it extremely difficult. Are you, are you able to cheat at all, Adam, in, in the sense that as you're preparing for Miami, bring any Baltimore into it, or are you just too focused on Miami to even allow the following Thursday to creep in? Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of worked out that way where we you know some things were put in that we didn't call, some packages were put in we didn't call, and that we're able to basically copy and paste, and guys have got reps on it. Tell me what you think of, you know, John Harbaugh, because from the outside looking in, wow, he, he's terrific. I mean, every year his team is really good. As a coach, what do you think of him? Yeah, I agree. I mean, he does a great job with kind of whatever happens during, this, during the year. He does a great job of, you know, adjusting. He, he finds a way, you know, every December, you, you know, we're always talking about Baltimore, you know, being involved in whether they're going to make the playoffs or they're in the playoffs. You know, they've had some kind of something happen to where, like last year, they had a change in quarterbacks midway through the season, and, and they adjusted and, and made that work and, and really, really got things rolling for them, you know, for down the road as well. A lot of people are saying, and we're talking with Adam Gase here on the Michael K Show, that this might be the best team in the NFL right now. Do you look at it that way? Let's say if Lamar Jackson is healthy, are they that good? Yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. They, they have a lot of great players on defense. They have a lot of great players on offense. You know, their special teams is always strong. They're, 
they're hitting on all cylinders right now. They played a, a tough game last last Sunday or two days ago, you know, obviously on the road and won that. And, you know, it wasn't ideal conditions for, for anybody in there. You, you see kind of the wind blowing pretty strong there and a lot of throws were missed. But, you know, this is, this is a very tough team to play. Does it surprise you at all that statistically the road team struggles on these Thursday games? Does it surprise me? Yeah. No. Is that just from the it's prep tough. and the travel, or it's? I mean, it's it, it's just you feel like you have shorter time when you're traveling. We're lucky because we're able to take a train, so you know our guys aren't getting dehydrated from the flight and all mm -hmm. those type of things. So, you know, I you know it'll be interesting to kind of see how this goes with us with the travel because I've never had to do this on a Thursday night. You know, travel by train and things like that. We did it different last year and, and left on a, we left on Tuesday, just trying to give ourselves some more time when we were in Houston. So you'll leave Wednesday night on the train? Yeah, I think, I think it's Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Um, you're pretty good at this. You have a, a real poker face. We really can't read you that well. How much did you want to win that Miami game? How much was your heart in your mouth on that last drive? I just wanted to win a game. I think we were, you know, for me, it's, it, we lost that, lost the week before. It was like you just want to get the taste of winning back. You know, it was real. It was nameless, faceless at that point. You know, I mean, it just that's what it was. I mean, when you lose, you lose that game to Cincinnati, and we played so bad, and and just nothing, nothing was good. That just wanted to get a win. But there's nothing, you know, s something special. You, you didn't want to get beaten by Miami, the team that you go twice in a season. Or is that something that yeah, you I mean, think you about wanna, later? You don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose to a division team twice in a year. You know, I mean, that was just something. I mean, we hadn't had a division win yet, so we needed to get, you know, be able to cross that one off the list. But forget about first, a division first. win. A team that let you go. Just personally, did that mean more to you? No, I, I, my mind wasn't in that. That's not where my mind was. Okay. Now, as you get ready for this Ravens game, you start looking at the problems on first down. We asked um, Sam about it, but I'll ask you, it just seems like you're putting yourself in a lot of those second and third and longs. How can you be better on first down? Oh, we just, you know, when we run the ball, we just, we need to be more efficient in the run game. You know, we, we were trying to, we were trying to stay out of second and long. That was kind of one of the things that we were actually trying to do. We, mm -hmm. we did a better job of it in the, the first half than the second half. You know, we were trying to keep them out of one of their packages that they were able to keep getting in, and you know, they were bringing all kind of all kind of pressure, and we we kind of just didn't didn't give ourselves a good enough chance on some of those first down plays. Some of them, I absolutely wish I could have back as far as calls, but you know, the guys they did a good job of battling through it and and then putting something together there in those last two drives. I think Bilal had 19 carries. That's the most of any running back all year. So the narrative is out there, coach, and I'm going to throw it your way. See, he doesn't like Le'Veon Bell, so when Le'Veon's not there, he runs the ball more. Your 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 response to that? Yeah, I mean, we're going to do whatever we have to do to win the game. I mean, we felt like when when things were hitting the way they were hitting, I mean, we were just we were able to pop some runs. I mean, in the second half, it didn't feel the same way. They were they were doing a better job stopping it. You know, we did we had to kind of change gears. And do you have any injuries for this game on Thursday that we should know about? Yeah, it might be too long to go over. <laughs> is uh, Bilal going to be able to play? No, he's got he's not he's got the flu, and he has an ankle. And your tight end Griffin? Yeah, he's he's got an ankle as well. <laughs> wow, how are you going to patch this together? We'll figure it out. Yeah, I That's guess you have do. to. And well, it's not like you haven't had to deal with it all year, and, and especially in the game against Miami. Have you found? Anything or su be surprised by any players that have gotten opportunities because of the injuries you've had? Well, I mean, I look at it as, you know, we've added some pieces, you know, getting Vincent Smith. I mean, he had a huge play in this last game, you know, really put us in position, you know, to have a chance for a field goal. And then he gets the DPI and, you know, we end up getting one more play tie, tie, ties in there and he gets that. 10 yard gain that put us in a, a good spot for the field goal. But there's there's been a ton of guys. I mean, on defense, it's it's been a revolving door, and I feel like there's a lot of guys that have stepped up and been able to play, and it's it's created depth for us when when you look at the next year. Adam Gase is our guest on the Michael K show. I, I I don't know if you agree with this. I looked at when they turned that into a defensive pass interference on your last drive. There's no way New York overturns that in week two or three. I just think it's changed. As a coach who has to challenge things, do you think that it has changed the way they're calling that and whether they'll overturn it or not? 
Uh, I'm not, you know, it's hard for me to say. I know, I mean, we, we check out all the challenges throughout the league and, you know, I don't know if they're considering certain ones more egregious than what it was earlier. It's hard for me to say. I mean, I think that those ones that we've challenged in the past, that we we felt like there was a legit shot, and whether or not they got overturned, I mean, that was that's up to them. Obviously, we, you know, obviously, I'm happy that they were able to do that in this last game. Were you surprised that it was turned into a pass interference? I don't know if surprised. I wasn't really worried about it. I was mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to call. Yeah, you would have a call fourth and eighteenth, right? Not a lot of great selections, right? So I was trying to try to figure out what to do there. Any thought on this Patriot controversy, the videotaping? No, I don't have anything on that. Do you worry about them doing that to you? No. Not because you don't care, or just you know your security will be able to take care of it. No, I just, <laughs> I mean, that's something I, I don't, I don't think about stuff like that. Coaching of the uh, Patriots, sorry, last thing, uh, Coach, speaking of the Patriots, yesterday we played the clip during ENN. It was the anniversary of the uh, Miami Miracle. Any any thoughts on that moment, that ridiculous end to beating the Pats last year? Uh, I mean, I'm glad it happened. I mean, it was fine. I'm glad we finally ran that play. We executed it well. What level of surprise do you have when something like that actually works out? Well, it's 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 strange. I've I've seen probably one too many. I've been on both ends of it, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, the first one I ever saw was the uh, the one at Michigan, Colorado. I was actually at that game and was at LSU for the Kentucky one, and I was on the other end of it when Baltimore beat us in Denver when Joe Flacco hit that. Oh that, yeah, that throw down the sideline. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I know your time is short because of the Thursday game. Enjoy the train ride. Have a have a good game on Thursday, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yep. That's